Hello, Internet. I hope you're doing well. I'm Daniel, the Pitch Professor, and I have a new video I'd like to take a look at. And what this, I have to admit, the title kind of here caught my attention. And I'm thirsty, so it kind of more work together. And the title's called You Have Just Alienated Four Dragons. And that sounds promising for me because that means there should be quite a lot of learning in it. And that's what this whole thing is about. By the way, if you're new to this video, I do one video a week. And if you want to learn a bit about pitching, just watch two, three, four, five of them. Um, because over the last 10 years, I've seen, worked on, witnessed, whatnot, a bit more than 10,000 pitches. Um, they had the title of the pitch professors. Not just pull it out of my nose, but earn the hard way. And I, yeah, I like just uh, giving some insights. What I think works well, what doesn't work well, and what I would challenge However, pitching is sometimes quite subjective, so if there's something you totally think is rubbish, uh, just write it in the comments. That would be amazing. Speaking of which, like, comment, subscribe, and hit the bell button. You know the deal. That makes me happy, makes the algorithm happy, and uh, yeah, whatever. Let's just dive right into it. Last into the den, a university pals turned business partners Marissa Poster and Teddy Levenfish. The worst thing can do, no, let's, let's go away. <laughs> High energy. I mean, small comment there. I mean, the dude seems very much on fire. Um, that's what adrenaline does. And seeing the two of them hobble around, it seems a little weird. But in fact, you know, I'm also a professional speaker and, and moderator. Sometimes before I go on stage, I actually also jump. Quite simply, I think it makes perfect sense to loosen up and to also kind of burn some of the adrenaline um, before you go out on the pitch in that sense. Like pitch as in like soccer pitch, because think about it. You would never do sports without warming up. So why would you go on stage without warming up? So warm up, get your fight song on or whatever it is, dance to haka, I don't, whatever works for you. And then go in and deliver energy. Now, I don't mean this whole chaka bullshit stuff, but I mean like real, authentic energy. Because, hey, you could be pitched 17 out of 18. The dragons, the sharks, the jury, whoever it is, they could be bored out of their skull. And then you come in and you deliver energy. However, however Teddy does seem a little, well, a bit of an extra bit of energy. Um, but we'll find out anyway. Yeah, let's let, let's just have a look. There's a massive opportunity in the natural energy drink sector. Oh, that's and we want to ride the wave and be at the forefront. A fruit melt seltzer drink. Matcha though, isn't it? Fruit matcha energy drink. Everything we do, we're kind of figuring out on the fly. We have no food and beverage experience. We got this. Got this. And here's the thing, like everything they do, they're figuring out on the fly. It sounds, I don't think that translates well on TV because it sounds like we have no clue what we're doing. And But, but in fact, if, if you're running a startup, that's in fact most of the time what you're doing. You have a hypothesis. So you say, I think this could work. And then you figure it out by doing because this gives you speed which you need as an innovator. Whereas if you know exactly what you're doing um, and you're in an area where there's tens of thousands of others, then it's, well, then it's probably not a startup anymore. And then it's a bit something else. I like the idea. It just seems a little off to say it that way. But then again, that's how TV works. It's a great element of an interview to put there too. Also potentially put the audience in a certain way how to take these two. They're young. They're on fire and they're pitching an energy drink. So that could be promising. Okay. So it's been a challenging journey, but we're super excited for what's to come. Hello, dragons. How are we doing today? Fine. Tremendous. Amazing. Amazing. I'm oh, small thing. Audience questions are hard because if you say, so how are you doing today? There's a chance that they don't respond. And that can be a very bad start to a presentation. In other words, if you're saying, um, you go on a stage and say, how many of you want to found a startup? And you're speaking at an uh, entrepreneur's uh, conference and no one raises their hand. That's awkward as well. So that happens. And it happens most of the time because audiences usually don't like engaging. 
By the way, I do this all the time. I totally love it. But then you have to follow up. You have to ask a second time. You have to get the audience to do something because you don't want to lose your momentum in second one. So think about it. If you ask audience questions, how would you respond if they are not reacting? And what I do is I always have a second question, which is usually a little more in line. And then I have a third, which is usually totally outrageous or totally nuts, where people go, like, what, what did you just ask? And then I can kind of gauge my audience. And then I know I have like quite a bit of attention. And then I'll go in. Or tools like Slido or Mentimeter work really well on larger stages. But whatever happens, if you ask an audience question, they don't respond and you just continue, don't. That's bad. That's big boo-boo. So think about a scenario and then do it. Marissa. I'm Teddy. And we're the fans of Perfect Ted, the brand on a mission to spread positive energy. So we're here today to ask for £50,000 in return for a 5% stake in our business. For years, I've struggled with ADHD and anxiety, which was particularly challenging while studying at university in the US. I would consume copious amounts of coffee and energy drinks to help me get through the long- Small thing, did you see these two facial reactions? Initially, it was like these two guys were like, oh, whatever. I'm not sure if that's actually what they thought, but if you just look at their facial expressions, that seems like the initial feeling. Oh, yeah, poor thing. ADHD and anxiety. There we go. First world problems. Why am I saying this? Um, never pitch alone. I say it in every video, but seeing this reaction is worth a lot. You don't see it when you're pitching, but you do see it if you have someone else observing it. You can read so much out of people's faces. That's a hard start. Let's see if they can turn it around. Long study days, but the caffeine gave me jitters, crashes, and exacerbated my anxiety symptoms. That's when I discovered matcha, a powdered Japanese green tea that offers slow release energy. I was hooked. So naturally, I recommended it to everyone, including Teddy, who at the time was studying to go to law school. We found a massive barrier to people switching to matcha was its umami flavor and the time it took to prepare. So. Something just happened. Some of the last few lines uh, 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 Marissa said must have caught and caught the attention of Peter Jones because suddenly he's on. And I also really like the way uh, the Teddy just said, look, there was something we found. It was a massive barrier. So that's great storytelling because he's giving the audience the understanding that it's not like a naive flight towards the wall, but quite simply saying, hey, look, we identify this barrier. We've understood it's a huge problem and we are working on a solution a very smart way. When Marissa moved to London last year, we quit our jobs in finance and created an on-the-go solution. The UK's first matcha-powered energy drinks, flavored with real fruit. So that One more small thing, we quit our jobs in finance. That means probably well-paid jobs. The two of them said, look, we have these well-paid jobs, but we are quitting them because we believe so strongly in our product. There. And that shows already a level of commitment everyone else could feel as amazing as we did. Our drinks will keep you energized for twice as long, improve your focus, and give you the antioxidants you need to look as young as Steven. Oh, thank you. Uh, 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 really? Uh, 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 Excuse uh, uh, me. Uh, uh, that, was a, that was wrong. You, you should have said to the younger Chuka, because he's the oldest. I wanted, wanted, to, I wanted to say you. Marissa wanted to say. <laughs> you haven't even finished your pitch yet. You've just alienated four dragons. <laughs> <laughs> it's not a good start, is it? I mean, small thing. It's, it's funny. It's OK. Now I know why they have the title. It's a bit clickbaity, isn't it? But still, um, this could go horribly wrong because again, you're pitching to egos. And if you say, if you choose the youngest person in the room and say, "Well, you're, you're the youngest. You want to look like them," that's really bad. So what you want to do is, I think, talking about people's looks and 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 the, the, is always a bit of a hard one. And then on top, choosing the one who's obviously the youngest, that's even worse because all the others are in fact going to feel a little, mm, probably quite a few of the gentlemen, probably also the ladies, that's on top a little. But again, um, let's give them the benefit of, of being young and naive. Might as well. Can we go back out? Go back you need in. to shift quick. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, let me continue. We launched the brand on last year. And in just seven months, We've landed on shelves across 450 Holland and Barrett stores nationwide, Planet Organic. 
my face went up and Tuka's face went up in just seven months. So we're showing traction numbers now in seven months on, f what did she say, 450 shelves. That is impressive because that means they have the ability to negotiate their way into a shelf, which is very hard. It's something I, I see people underestimate all the time saying, look, we just go there, knock on the door and say, can we put our product on your shelf? No, you can't. That's a very long and arduous process. And then, just within seven months, without any previous experience, to be on 450 or 250, be it, shelves, that's impressive. Because it also means they've managed to convince their way in, they've managed to create all the logistics needed, and also people demanding it. That's strong. And excitingly have a grocery listing in the US. We hope that you'll join us on this journey of fueling happy feelings. Now, let's try some drinks. Woo! A high energy pitch from Marissa Poster and Teddy Levenfish. If you Teddy's could look into your it. boxes, we have our three flavors, pineapple yuzu, apple raspberry, and pear and ginger. The pair are seeking 50,000 pounds in return for a 5% stake in their business. You'll also see our matcha powder, which is organic and ceremonial grade from Uji Japan. It's Stephen Bartlett to tee off with questions for the young drinks entrepreneurs. Teddy, Marissa, how old are both of you? I'm 25, just turned 25. 25. As well. I'm two weeks older than him. Are you... <laughs> it's cute to say that she's two weeks old. I mean, she, they're both very young. I mean, I think for me, age is never an indicator for ability. Um, I think if Tuka or Peter Jones would have asked, it would be a bit different. They're different. But I think what Stephen is doing here is okay. He's building a bridge um, because he also became wildly successful at a young age. But again, for me, if you're thinking that age means ability or lack of it, it doesn't. I've met incredibly able 25-year-olds and incredibly inept 55-year-olds. Age is it's just a number. Ability is something else. Are you both currently full-time on the business? Yes. yes. I'm the CEO, Chief Energy Officer, and I also oversee our marketing and our branding. And I'm in charge of our operations, supply chain, manufacturing. Have you raised capital previously? No. A small thing. Um, first, full-time question. That's always like one of these really important ones. Are you in full-time? That's usually one of these tick-the-box questions. Um, why I made a face is like she's CEO and she says she's chief energy officer. For me, like these kind of bullshit titles are usually, I don't like them. I see why people do it. But for me, it just, I don't know what the F a chief energy officer is. I do know what a CEO is. Uh, and I know who is responsible for operations. Um, why is that important or not? I mean, at the end of the day, titles, whatever. But... If you're doing a business, if you're running a business, you want to know whom to call if things go wrong. And I don't know what a chief energy officer does, but I do know what a CEO does. So if in doubt, get the real positions that people just know who is, at the end of the day, responsible for what and who can escalate what. Anyhow, great answers. And um, I just caught Stephen asking, have you ever raised capital before? It's a very relevant question. It's another one. Do you know what you're getting yourself into? ticking the boxes, and by that, reducing perceived risk. Uh, so today we've put £245,000 into the business. That's substantial. £120,000 in director's loans and £125,000 from family loans. When I was 25, I didn't think I had a quarter of a million. Where did you get that from? So we worked, both worked in the US before. While I was there, I was investing because I always knew I wanted to do something entrepreneurial. And so I knew I needed to save up to be able to go and do something. And so when, when did you start this business? We Impressive. launched the business around last June. Right. And then give me, an, give me an idea of what's happened since then in terms of your sales. We've done £90,000 in sales, 53 of which, which has come in the last three months. And we're on track to do £40,000 uh, this month. What's your long-term vision for this brand? World domination. Um, <laughs> you know, we really, we hope to be a household brand across several different countries, um, especially the UK. Steve likes the answer. There, that one. 
Um, and what I like is all the answers were answers that weren't made up on the spot, but all of these answers were there because they had thought about it, they had planned it out, they were honest. Honest and real answers are always given on the spot. What's your favorite animal? Dog. If you're not sure about it, you start going Whoa, all over the place. Um, I don't know, you know, probably one of those not so smelly, I guess the fluffy, probably um, hamst hamsters. Try that out. I love doing that in my trainings is just randomly asking people without any warning what their favorite animal is. Try that out tomorrow when you're talking to someone. In the midst of a conversation, say favorite animal. And you'll either get a one word reply, dog, or people always shake their head in disbelief that you're actually asking them this. Um, it's also a great giveaway. People are going, why are you asking me this? But the brain goes like, but I know this dog. And it's the same thing. What's your target? Well, world domination. I like it. I mean, she's kind of joking, but then again, they're saying they want to build a household brand name. The sky's the limit. That's what you want to hear. That's great answers. How much money have you raised? Boom, boom, boom. It's always the same thing. I like strong answers. And again, I always say, but the faces tell the story. Stephen Bartlett is more than happy. What they lack in years, Marissa and Teddy more than make up for in ambition. But has an eagle-eyed Peter Jones identified an issue with the duo's packaging? Just straight away, what hits me, um, I actually don't it. see the brand. What is the brand? So where you have the big match your words, uh, just above that you have the logo Perfect Ted. The reason we consciously made that decision is because when we first launched the drinks, we had zero brand equity and we didn't have a huge marketing budget. So we wanted to make it abundantly clear what the product was on shelf. But as we do gain more brand equity, we plan to change that. So you've launched a new product. Smart but what answer. are you up against at the same time? There's um, huge growth in kombucha, but natural energy, other natural energy drinks that have also come into the category. So we're up against a fast growing category, but other competitors that aren't really innovating that much. In terms of he loved matcha, the answer. I'm a kombucha drinker. Okay. And there's and, and it's, there's been an explosion. It was really hard. And the stuff I used to buy had that always had little scummy bits floating around in the bottom. Ooh. Um, but it's really developed. And do you know where I buy mine from? The milkman. What a posh milkman. <laughs> no, all, all, they all do it. There's a load of them across the country. Ours I don't know. Milk more. Our, our milkman just sells milk like <laughs> <laughs> In fact, you thought I was drinking champagne last night. I was drinking oh. a lovely, clear, sparkling kombucha. It's because of how you're acting. <laughs> <laughs> well, it gives you energy. That's why you do it. Um, so in terms of uh, that market, which has had an explosion, and I'm a kombucha drinker, tell me why I would switch to matcha. Great question. You would probably try it as a compliment um, because kombucha targets different things. For matcha, we're specifically looking to the, the effects of caffeine and L-theanine and how it's able to enhance mental cognition and give you energy for a longer period of time than coffee or other energy drinks, um, as well as for that antioxidant boost. That's a great answer. I'm set. Sorry, great answer and a very confident answer. Confidence is key in a Q&A session. For me, a pitch is always great. You can pitch anything but a pitch is aimed at triggering a great Q&A session. And the questions you will get during the pitch are primed, uh, sorry, the questions you'll get during the Q&A session are primed during the pitch. What are people going to ask? And I like it the way um, Deborah tells us that she likes kombucha and says, well, well how does it complement that? How, how you? And then Marissa gives this really smart answer. It means they've thought about it. So in your case, think about potential questions and come up with clear, straightforward answers and plan them, map them out, say them out loud before that you do not have to think, but that you have them at the ready. Fill some of the gaps in. Absolutely. Absolutely. It's a crowded market, but Deborah Meaden is satisfied that Marissa and Teddy are offering something distinct. But while the pair's natural energy drinks may get brain cells buzzing, can they also tickle taste buds? Oh, nicely done, speaker. 
I have sampled in detail all of these drinks and can confirm I categorically like all three of them. Oh, Thank amazing. you, sir. And I'll be really honest, I struggle a little bit with matcha, so I wasn't <laughs> expecting at all. I thought I'm going to have a little bit, but I've actually gone back three times to drink more, so, so that's a really good sign. You've come in here with an absolutely brilliant product. You two are fantastic. And I think if there was ever a case study on how to come in the den and knock it out the park, you would absolutely epitomise that. Great. I think the only thing that I think is slightly too problematic for me is, you know, to only have 5% in the business, it's not quite enough incentive. You're not high enough on my priority list for me to want to be right in there. I think she said it very nicely. You're not high enough on my priority list because the thing is, like... Uh, investors have multiple investments and the larger the upside is the more they will think about this new baby and try and make it work well if you have whatever it is 25 percent in it yes you're very much involved if you have a percent in it you're like whatever might as well um and it's nicely put you're not high enough on my priority list so saying turning it around is, is great psychology in that uh, in, in in that in that in that um in that sentence saying like if you want to come up on my priority list and that if you want that i create impact in your business give me more of the cake great one let's see how they respond but i can change that <laughs> sounds like marlon brando so i'm going to make you an offer so i will give you all the money for 10% of the business. Thank, Thank you so you. much. Really appreciate it. That's what gets you on the, on the priority for list at the top. Teddy from Sarah Davies. Is Stephen Bartlett also poised to try and bag himself a share of their tea based business? Once in a while, you have entrepreneurs come in the den that you just, you just have a huge degree of admiration for. And um, the journey you're on is a as young entrepreneurs, is a similar journey that, that, I, that I've been on as well. So um, I'm going to make you an offer as well. I'm going to offer you all of the money for 10% of the business as well. Thank you, really appreciate yeah. it. You're great, both of you. And you won't be surprised I'm going to make you an offer. I, I don't want to give you the whole spiel about what I can do. But... Whether it's distribution, marketing, sourcing, you name it, I can do it. That's all. So I'm going to offer you all of the money, that's 50,000, and I also want 10% of the business. Thank, Thank you, you very so much. much. Is it just me? But but like in, in, in the videos I've seen so far, I think Tuka's pitches towards the entrepreneurs are always the least convincing ones. I never have the feeling he really wants to get in there because, I mean, Stephen so far has built a bridge saying, look, I'm a young entrepreneur, so are you. I understand what you're on about. Um, uh, before that, we heard, look, if you want to be at the top of my priority list, I need more equity, but I want you to be at the top of my priority list. Therefore, give me 10%. And Tuka just says, well, pff, I don't want to give you the whole spiel, but this is what I can do, and uh, we'll, we'll go live with it. It's not very convincing, is it? But, you know, I could just be a bias here. My fellow dragons clearly have been drinking your high energy drink because they're being really nice to you at the moment. Wow, this is like, this is, this is, is there anything wrong with this business? I mean, I'm terrible to work with. <laughs> no. Dangerous answer. He's a delight. No, Very look, dangerous it's answer. It's really, really interesting. You're perfect, Ted. I think you need perfect Peter. <laughs> I'd really do. So I'm going to offer you all of the money for 10%. Mm -hmm. A flurry of further offers for the traders in tea, who now have four competing bids to consider. Only Deborah Meaden is yet to show her hand. Is she prepared to match or even undercut her fellow dragons in an attempt to secure the deal? Well, um, guys, none of anything you've talked about, you know, do I sit here and think, oh, not sure about that. And that's what I've got to do. I've got to see a map. I've got to think, actually, what can I do here? So you won't be at all surprised to hear um, I'm going to make you an offer. And I think I must want you more than them. I think I must value more than the other guys because I'm going to offer you all of the money and I want 7.5% of the business. Wow, thank you so, thank so, you much. so much. Really appreciate it.
Now that's how you pitch to entrepreneurs and say, look, all of them have made their 10% offer, but I want you so much. I want just seven and a half. Because at the end of the day, if you as an investor want to be part of the business, you also pitch. You also give your value proposition why it would make sense to partner with you. And that's something you should never forget. It's it's a pitch at eye level. It's not just a one directional, please help, 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 I'm going to die. No, no, no. It's you saying, look, I have this business, which I totally believe in, and this is why. And then the other side says, oh, hell yes, so do I. And this is what I could do for you. So that's what you want to hear. Now, here's an interesting scenario, however, and again, these episodes are usually heavily edited. But before you pitch, think about your target jury member, your target investor, your target customer, the target you're trying to achieve. And not all dragons, not all sharks, not all investors are equal. Some can bring more to the table for your business and some less just by what they do by their skill set um and therefore it would make perfect sense to have done that homework before i would think um marissa and teddy will have done that thought about who is their perfect fit because now basically they have five offers and probably just minutes mere minutes to make one of their most important calls of their lifetime at least of their career so let's let's listen in and yeah. you would have to go to the wall. To yes, <laughs> probably. Thank you. A rare clean thoughts. sweep for Marissa and Teddy. Four dragons are seeking double the 5% equity the pair were originally looking to give away. Whilst Deborah Meaden wants 7.5%. It's decision time for the young entrepreneurs. Let's Thank see. you so, so, so Thank much. You all. I mean, sorry, just hear you say like you love the drinks. That's, I do. Um, it is great. I, I grew up watching the show, and I said to my dad that one day I'd be on the show. Yeah. And so. Fantastic. Um, Same. <laughs> in a different way. I see way. bonding there. Um, and we're super, super grateful for all the offers. This is really not an easy decision. Stephen and Peter, would you be willing to do 5% each and share the £50,000? So 5% each for £25,000 each. <laughs> I would, I'm going to be honest. I, I would. I, I would, I love it. Yeah, I really yeah. do. I think it tastes great. Okay, thank you so thank much, you, really appreciate and it. thank you. Have we got a deal? Yes, you have a deal. Yeah, we have a deal. Oh, amazing. <laughs> Thank you, everyone, for the kind feedback. And Thank you very much. Thank, really you. Thank, you. Thank, you. Thank, Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. Really appreciate it. Nicely pitched. I mean, again, it's heavily edited, yada, yada, yada. But after all of the dragons made so kind and open offers, um, I think it would have been would have made sense to first tell the others why they're kind of deciding against them. And not just saying, look, the two of you or with you, you're great. Thank you very much. And bye-bye. And, and, and just letting the other three hang there. Maybe they didn't do it, but that's the way it's edited. But I think all reserve uh, deserve at least a short, it's great, but we decided we'd take someone else. It's great. We decided we wouldn't go with your off either, although we really value it. However, we went. This is always, it always makes sense not to have the other ones just hang in there and being hopeful. Um, and then again, also, also Stephen and Peter Jones, seem, they seem very excited about this. Yeah, lovely. Success for Marissa and Teddy, who leave the den with £50,000 and the backing of a dynamic dragon duo who <laughs> very could give happy, their budding they? business a massive boost. Oh my God. Oh, that's crazy. God. I'm going to cry. No, I have to keep it together. Unbelievable. They I'm are well unbelievable. Gel. I will be perfectly oh, really? honest. I, I am think, well I, gel. I, I think here. we're going to make much a lot of money. <laughs> I think I'm in a state of shock, but feeling amazing and so beyond proud of ourselves. You know, if I could have played in my mind what a best case scenario might have been out of what just happened, I never would have expected that. Uh, yeah, I don't even, I don't have any words. I'm so grateful. Boom. 
what a lovely pitch. What a lovely performance. And it shows that preparation is key, but also being able to deliver your passion with a high degree of energy. That's what people want to see. And they just want to see that you really, really, really believe in that and that you want to make others believe in you. And if this aligns, then magic happens. In that sense, it was a pleasure. Thank you very much for joining me. Take care, stay safe, and talk to you next week. Thank you very much, and bye-bye.